Hey girlies and welcome back to the pod. So today, super exciting. I'm talking all about my time in the Grand Canyon, which in case you didn't know, I was there for pretty much two weeks with no phone, no service, no people besides whoever was on the trip or something. And it was a time. It was fun. It was fun. But before we get into all that, best and worst of the week. So my best of the week was that this morning I got to have breakfast with one of my good friends, Seth. We went to this place called First Watch. It's like this brunch place where I live. And it was so good. Hadley was there too. And it was fun. He's going to college soon. So didn't really get to see him. And then I was gone for two weeks. He, we all, my entire family also had dinner with him last night, but it was all really fun, very exciting, and it's just been a good time. I'm currently home, obviously. I wasn't home for two weeks, and then I'm leaving again for another six, which is crazy, but I'm excited. I think it'll be fun. My worst of the week was that I had a red-eye flight from... Vegas to Chicago, which no, (laughs) no, it left. So I'll talk more about this, but it left at like 11 p.m. and we got to Chicago maybe 5 a.m. Then our next flight back home wasn't until 10 a.m. So that night I got three hours of sleep, which wasn't fun. Last night I got 12 though. So moving up, moving up. Grand Canyon. Getting there was a bit of a struggle. I think we might have had three flights from Kentucky. We were in Denver for maybe 10 hours. I don't know, a very long time. And I had never been to the Denver airport, literally ever. Don't plan on going back. It's huge for absolutely no reason. I mean, I was asking my parents, and it's because apparently Denver. It's in the middle of the country, which is it? Is it though? I mean, yeah, but still. And we just sat there. So getting there was not fun. And then we got to Flagstaff, which is in Arizona. And Flagstaff was very cool. It was very outdoorsy. I would say it was not really my vibe, which is funny because I went on a I guess you could consider it a very outdoorsy type of trip, but being in Flagstaff, I felt so out of place. I was like, oh my fucking God, literally what the heck. And ooh, Flagstaff was interesting. We were there, I think, for a day before we had to leave. And what did we even do? I'm trying to remember. We didn't really do anything in Flagstaff, but the biggest thing about Flagstaff was going from Kentucky, where I live, to... Arizona Flagstaff. Um, where I live, maybe the elevation is four hundred feet above sea level. Flagstaff, I don't even know what it was, six thousand, maybe four thousand, somewhere up there. But let me just say, I could not breathe. It was so bad. Um, and it was so dry. Because where I live, we always call it like a rainforest or something, because it rains all the freaking time. Literally every day, I think Seth was saying that when we were gone, there were like three, three big storms. It rained almost every day. And I know before I left, there were, maybe it was like flash flooding. The roads were flooded like three times in a week and the roads never flood. But when it rains here, it rains. So going to Flagstaff where it's so dry was hard, especially on my skin. I've never had such dry skin as I did on this trip, but that it was that wasn't bad. So Flagstaff, after like getting over all the elevation, all the stuff, it was fine. It wasn't too bad. Um we met everybody in the trip. And I just like to point out, I did not know everyone going into this trip. Uh the trip we went on, it was with one of our family friends, and then their extended family. 
So it was 16 people, including my family, and then there were eight guides. And I maybe knew three, three to five people already on the trip, not including my family, but like three to five other people on the trip pretty much only really knew, like we're friends with two of them. And then the other few were acquaintances. Everyone else I had never met before. This was my friend's extended family from the West Coast. I knew most of her family on the East Coast, but it was honestly, I was kind of scared. I was like, oh my God, I don't know these people. This is going to be so awkward, but it wasn't, it wasn't bad. It was honestly very, it was very fun, but meeting everyone, we had, I guess, like a pre-trip type of meeting and so many people just kept showing up. I was like, oh my gosh, who, literally, who are these people? This trip is going to be so, so interesting, you know, but it was a good time. We had our meeting. They were going over a bunch of safety things, life things, packing, transportation. I was like, oh my gosh, like, I don't know what to expect. I've been to the Grand Canyon once, never actually really in it though. I went to the North Rim in eighth grade on a school trip, but I had never actually been in the canyon, so I didn't know what to expect. And it was definitely not what I expected. I don't even know. I, going into the trip, there wasn't one set thing that I was like, oh yeah, like this would make sense. I was like, I had no idea what was happening going into it. All I knew was that I was going to be on a raft in the Colorado River and that was it. Also, I don't know if I explained this, but so in the Grand Canyon, I spent 12 days whitewater rafting along or not along in the Colorado River, which is so freaking fun. It was the absolute best time ever. So that meant we were camping every night along the side, I guess, the banks, whatever it's called, and beaches and rafting every day. We went on a few hikes. We saw waterfalls. We went to the Little Colorado River. We did a bunch of things, but I didn't know any of this going into it. All I knew was that I was going to be on a raft and I had only been whitewater rafting once in my life. And that was, what is the river called? Is it like the Noom River in West Virginia? West Virginia? North Carolina? Some some river, I think, in North Carolina when I was really little. And I remember that trip quite vividly, mainly because I was in one of those little ducky rafts with my mom and it flipped. And I remember I hit my back on a rock. So I was a little traumatized from that as one would be when you are a child forced to go on whitewater rafting when you are not an outdoorsy little kid. I mean, I would say I'm more outdoorsy now, but that was that was a special time. So I really didn't have very many expectations, but going into the trip before I was looking at the website, I was watching all the videos, all the safety videos, and they're showing everything that could go wrong. And you're like, holy crap, I'm literally going to die. But it wasn't as bad. It wasn't bad. It was very fun. So from Flagstaff, we then drove to Lee's Ferry, which is like the put-in spot on the Colorado. And it was so hot. I know, obviously, going to Arizona, I was like, oh my gosh, it's going to be so hot. Bro. Bro. I I don't know what I was expecting, but it was it was hot. And at home, it maybe the highs will be 80, 90 with humidity, like a lot of humidity. So I'm used to that. But being in 110 degrees of dry heat was such an experience. I don't know if, I don't know which is worse, being in 80 degrees humidity or 110 dry heat. Both suck. I'll say both suck, but honestly, the weather most of the time wasn't even that bad. It was only like the last five days where you're like, holy crap, it's hot. It is very hot, but throughout most of it, I mean, it was like kind of hot, 
but not too bad. I know the guys were saying the trip before us the entire time they were in a heat wave. So every day it was like 120 and I would have, I would have died. I would have hated that. But so we put on our boats at Lee's Ferry. We met all the guides. I was super nervous. And honestly, it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. It was very fun. And each night we camped at a different beach. Even I know the first night we spent, it was like on a rock ledge. I don't really know how to explain it. It was in the side of the canyon. It was just rock and like a few spots of sand. But when we pulled in there, I was so confused. I was like, how, how, how are we going to camp on this? It was at an angle. There was maybe a little... Actually, I don't even know if I want to say there was a flat spot. It wasn't really flat. It's pretty much at an angle, kind of vertical-ish. And everyone was very confused. We were like, is this what we're doing? Is this what we're doing the whole time? This is where we're sleeping? <laughs> On the rocks? What? But that was honestly the only camp that was like that. The rest of it was sandy beaches, which is just so fun. And honestly the best part was that you got to you didn't need a tent to sleep because it was just so hot and there's no bugs right because I guess it's not humid and it's you're in a canyon so it's not perfect climate I guess for a bunch of bugs I don't I don't know but it was so cool because every night you could see the stars Every night you saw the Big Dipper. Every night you could pretty much see the Milky Way. It was very, very cool. And we had sleeping pads, sleeping bags, but honestly, no one really used it. It was too hot. And it was a time. It was a time. I've never slept outside camping before because whenever I go camping, that's on the East Coast. It's freaking raining. There's bugs everywhere. You know, it's cold. But camping on the West Coast was fun. It was it was a it was a different experience. I I liked it. It was cool. I think one of my favorite things about the trip was we got to go to the Little Colorado River, which looks so fake because it's I don't want to say bright blue. It's very it looks like a milky baby blue and it's very opaque and it looked very out of this world. It looked like someone had photoshopped it and it was so gorgeous. And the guides were telling us how it was a sacred place for the natives, which I mean, yeah, it made, we were all like, oh my gosh, this makes so much sense why this would be a sacred place. It was so beautiful and it was so fun because we got to see other people from different parties going by, we got to swim in it and it was just, it was perfect. It was perfect. I feel like it's so hard to explain an experience, specifically like going to the Grand Canyon. Like I can say it's amazing. It was great. It was beautiful. But like you don't know unless you've been, unless you've done it because it's really, you can't explain it. You, I definitely am not doing it justice, but it was honestly so amazing, so beautiful, and the landscape changes so much, which for some reason, whenever I thought of the Grand Canyon, I was thinking more of like Zion, where it's more of the orangey rock, but the rock changed so much, and I wasn't expecting that. I don't think any of us were really expecting it, and it's just so cool. We also got to do a lot of little hikes to cool places. We went in some side canyons and it was so peaceful. We went to some creeks and a lot of the places we went to were considered sacred for the natives. And whenever the guides would tell us that, I was like, oh my gosh, you can tell. Like, this is a special place. The entire time we were there, I kept having to remind myself, I was like, oh my God, I'm in the Grand Canyon. And that was just crazy to me because I spent 12 days in the Grand Canyon. Like, what is my life? What is my life? That's so freaking cool. Okay. That's so cool. And I think one of the best things about the trip was that I just got to be away from life. <laughs> I guess my phone, people at home, people on the internet, 
everything going on in the world and I just was there. I was experiencing it all. I was living in the moment. I honestly, I didn't really think about anything that was going on at home at all the entire time. I was just there. I didn't think about my podcast, which was big for me because I am thinking about it obviously all the time because I spent a I put a lot of work into it. I have to do a lot of things. I it keeps me busy, I guess you would say, part-time job. But I didn't really think about it once and it was so freeing not to have to worry about anything knowing that everything was okay, everything was fine, and I could just be there and experience life as it was happening. And that was just so awesome because I remember when I would go to camp um when was the last time I went to camp? Maybe eighth grade, whatever. When I, I went to camp for six years. I talked about this in my story time episode. But when I would go to camp, we would all talk about how we missed our phones, how we missed Snapchat, TikTok, all of those things. But I truly didn't even really go on my phone. I barely took any pictures. I was relying on other people. I mean, they had their phones. They could take the pictures. But I didn't really get out my phone. And it was so nice not to feel attached to it, not to feel like I needed to be on my phone. I needed to be doing something. And it was so refreshing to spend time away from social media, to spend time away from my phone in general, not having to look at a screen all the time. It was, I don't know, but highly recommend 10 out of 10, put your phone away, Honestly, I decided after the trip, I was like, I need to at least do like maybe one day a week, just not going on social media, just taking a break, taking time away because it helps so much with your mental health, with your overall well-being, keeping you in the moment and you don't need it. I swear you're not missing out on anything. I was, I wasn't on my phone for two weeks. What did I miss? Nothing important, really. I mean, maybe a few tiny things, but that doesn't really matter. And it's important to focus on what's actually going on around you. And I think that's what this trip really made me realize is the importance of really just actually living life, not just going by, not just doing your day to day, but actually experiencing what's going on, really trying to be present. If you're hanging out with people, with your friends, being present with yourself, not always just sitting on your phone, going on to TikTok, all those things. I mean, obviously, I love TikTok. I love looking at what other people are doing, but there's a time and place for that. And if you're spending all your time focusing on what's going online, it's as though you're not actually in the real world. You're not actually experiencing life. You're kind of just looking through it through a lens, you know? So, lesson of the episode, put away your phone go outside. I was outside for 12 days. It was hype. Go outside. Go to the pool. Go to a park. Go hiking. Literally sit in your backyard. Sit outside. Bring a book. Whatever. Just spend time away from your phone. Quiet time is good. Time to reflect. It's important. You need it. And I think it's so easy to forget, especially because of social media you're more focused on what other people are doing or what you could be doing instead of what's actually happening, what you're grateful for, and all these things. And actually, on the trip, one of the guides had oracle cards, which I guess are kind of like tarot cards. I'm not really sure. I'm not very, I guess, well-versed in them. But one of the cards that I drew was called Earth, and it talked about being grounded and pretty much really living in the moment and it it asks you questions like am I remembering that I'm a small part out of the whole am I grounded and like remembering all these things and I think that was really applicable for how I was feeling and it's important for me to remember especially as I'm home now and I have access to all this technology I have access to all the over stimulating things in life that it's important to stay grounded, to remember why you're really here, to stay in the present moment, to actually experience life. And I thought that was pretty cool. It was a fun thing, fun thing that I learned. It was honestly one of my favorite parts of the trip, not going on my phone. Because I mean, honestly, 
I love that I'm able to do all this stuff with social media, to do the podcast, to all these things, to have an audience, to have people that want to listen to me, but it can be overwhelming. It's a lot. It's a lot to put yourself out there to be on the internet and have to be there and have to show up. And it was just nice to disappear for a while to just put down my phone and say, you know what, that's okay. And I think everyone should be able to do that and just know you're not missing out. And you'll honestly have more fun without your phone. So leave it behind. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Okay. So on the trip, pretty much every day, I'll give you a day in the life rafting the Grand Canyon. Okay, so you wake up, it's around 5, 5.30 a.m., very bright outside, starting to get warm, starting to get hot. You are most likely still in the shade, and it's time to get up. So you're putting away all your stuff, 5 a.m., 5.30, whatever, brush your teeth, do all the things, put away your sleeping pad, put away all your stuff, your pillows, whatever you got out, and eat breakfast. And it was so nice because for 12 days, you didn't have to cook because all the guides did it. And it was like gourmet food. I mean, we had ahi tuna, we had burgers, we had steak, we had salmon, we had avocados until the last day. We had fresh fruit the entire time, which is just honestly amazing. Guys, we had ice cream on day six. How how can you say that you ate ice cream in the middle of the Grand Canyon? That That's cool. Honestly, very awesome. The food was great. I probably gained a few pounds, which then again is not bad because I probably needed to. Um... So it's not a big thing. A lot of people were freaking out. They're like, oh my God, I'm getting weight. That's not good. And I was like, who cares? <laughs> who cares? It's not a big deal, you know, but uh, who cares? So after breakfast, we would just sit in our chair circle, chat, do all the things. You pack up, time to leave camp, and you're on the river, 8 a.m., 8 a.m., it is hot. It's already maybe in the 80s, 90s, 100, whatever it was that day. But it is hot. Have a cute little bucket hat. Mm -hmm. One of those wide-brimmed hats, you know. And you're wearing long sleeves because you don't want to get burnt. And honestly, guys, I'm, I'm looking at my foot right now. But Chaco Tan, mine actually isn't that bad. But my friend's, hers was very defined. Mine isn't even I mean you can kind of see it I don't know I'll try to lift my foot up for people on YouTube I don't know if you can tell there's some zigzag lines it kind of looks like a V very very cool but Chaco Tan had to put on a lot of sunscreen and I'm saying a lot but honestly I put sunscreen on maybe twice a day (laughs) It, it wasn't bad but I was very covered We had sarongs, which is like a big cotton sheet. I think it's cotton. I don't know. But a big just sheet of fabric that you just put over your legs. I think I only got burnt on the last day, and that's because I didn't put on sunscreen on my legs. But I have a really cute shorts tan on one of my legs. It's not on the other one for some reason. I just have a very defined line on my thigh, which will be super cute when I have to be at the beach in a few days. I'm saying have to, like it's a chore. It's not a chore. I'm very excited. But when I'm at the beach, I'll have a really cute shorts tan on one leg. So, vibey. And on the river, we would do rapids, obviously. There was a lot of flat water, um, just chill water. The raft was great, good napping time. We'd raft for a while, do some rapids. And if you didn't know, so most rivers, the rapids are on a, like, I think maybe one to five scale, five being the most extreme. And at the Grand Canyon, it's more a one to 10, 10 being most extreme. And yes, we did do a 10, but it was the first day you're like, oh my God. 
these are so scary and you're holding on so tight and then the last day it's like going like i don't know like 10 foot waves five foot waves and you're like oh this isn't that bad and the funniest thing to me was that i was like oh my gosh i don't want to get wet i don't want to get wet but i'm on a river it's like you're you're gonna get wet girl you're gonna go wet so pretty much you spent all day just getting splashed getting soaked but it was fine because it's like 100 degrees so can't complain too much it was honestly super nice and we did some pretty big rapids luckily no one flipped no one fell out of the boat it was all very safe we had to wear helmets on a few of them and truly they weren't even i thought i would be scared looking at the rapids none of them were truly that scary it was honestly more it was like nervous excitement you know before you're going and it was just so fun feel like I've done a bad job explaining it. I'm just like, it was awesome. It was fun. It was great. But like, it was. It was a freaking time. It was a time. And everyone on the trip was just so amazing that you just wanted to be around everyone. All the guides were great. All the people on the trip were great. And it was just a fun time. It was a very fun time. And I'm just grateful that I got to have that experience because that's a once in a lifetime thing. I mean, you, when do you get to say that you spent two weeks in the Grand Canyon? Like, what? And honestly, so maybe it was day six. We were about halfway through the trip and we stopped at this place called Phantom Ranch, which is maybe the only man made structure actually in the canyon don't quote me on that one but obviously there's stuff on the south rim and the north rim and all that but this was like cabins stuff i don't know bridge I'm trying to think what was there there was bridges there were some cabins paths running water and it was so weird we were had gone six days seeing no really civilization maybe seeing some other parties like passing them but you weren't seeing buildings you weren't seeing all this stuff and it just looked so wrong just sitting there and it was kind of upsetting that you think that people want to commercialize like actually like the colorado and the grand canyon because it just looks so wrong it didn't fit and it was truly like upsetting seeing all that stuff i mean obviously they use it so it's like a midpoint like stopping point between south rim north rim for hikers which i mean makes sense but after going for almost a week of not seeing any buildings it just looked wrong and kind of made me sad and we talked a lot about on the trip like the importance of standing up for the environment of not letting people destroy these beautiful natural places and I feel like when you're when you're at home, you're like, oh, well, why does it matter something that's happening in Arizona? You know, like I'm in Kentucky. Why does it matter? But it kind of destroys the natural beauty, like people saying that they want to build dams like in Marvel Canyon. They want to put up what is it called? Like shops in the Grand Canyon, the like gift stores. No, no, it it ruins the whole ambiance, the whole aesthetic, the whole experience if you're trying to commercialize this beautiful place that's, I feel like, that's not its purpose. And that's just frustrating to me that people value, like, economics, money, all that stuff over like the natural beauty of a place like you don't need to you don't need to leech off of the natural beauty of this place like it's not there for you to commercialize it and there's already stuff on the north and south rim why do you need to put why do you need to put crap in the canyon like I don't know. It I can understand, but I just personally for me 
I can't imagine that like ever being a good thing. And I don't know. Capitalism at its finest, baby, right? Trying to destroy all the beautiful places, but yeah. When you spend that amount of time in such a beautiful and special place, you can't imagine it like any other way, I think. And that's what makes it so hard is when people say they want to put stuff there or that they wanted to build a dam there that you're ruining this beautiful place and I don't think that's okay sorry guys getting a little (laughs) teary-eyed but I think it's an important topic to remind yourself the importance of the natural world and how people are going to be needing it for generations. And if you're putting all this man-made stuff there, you're ruining the experience for others. And it's, it's not your right. It's not your right. And the craziest thing to me was that we saw where people i don't remember the time sometime in the 1900s where they were planning to put a dam you could see it in the walls they had dug out holes to like test the rock or whatever and going along the river and thinking that you're like oh this could have all been underwater and that's just crazy to think about because then you're like who no one else would get to experience this or that if they did put a dam there you wouldn't have gotten to experience that and I think that's what also made the trip so special is thinking about like (laughs) how many people are getting to do this and I don't know I felt very privileged and I was grateful to be able to be there (laughs) sorry for getting depressing on everybody but yeah today's episode is brought to you by ozoth ozoth is a boston-based women-owned supplement company that makes premium quality supplements for women with the mission to help people reach their highest potential without the harmful side effects of over-the-counter medications Their newest supplement, Boss Flow, is a PMS gummy that helps every woman be a boss no matter what day of the month it is. These little gummies are packed full with a delicious blast of strawberry flavor and powerful vitamins and nutrients to help soothe menstrual cramps, stop bloating, and balance out hormonal mood swings and acne symptoms that are often caused by periods. Trust us, we've heard these really work. Boss Flow is exclusively offering our listeners 10% off your next purchase by going to Amazon.com searching for boss flow gummies and using the code boss flow that's code b-o-s-s-f-l-o-w to get 10 percent off your purchase at checkout you need to have an amazon or amazon prime account to get these delicious gummies order boss flow supplements for the boss women on the go anyway moving on to more exciting topic someone did accidentally bleach their asshole so <laughs> Sorry, I don't feel like crying at the moment. So, some guy on the trip accidentally mistook the scrubbing bubbles bleach wipes for flushable wipes, you know, that you can use to wipe your butt, because the only words he saw on the package were flushable wipes. So, he's like, yo, cool, I can use that. No. He freaking rubbed bleach on his booty hole, and... It ble- it ble- yeah. Which we were all just very confused as to how that happened. Also, I just want to point out the bathroom situation was just so funny. So, there was a pee bucket. There was this thing called a groover, which is pretty much like a metal box with like a toilet seat on it. But you can see everyone else's poo and it gets kind of stanky, which I think just adds to the whole experience because you're like, this is so random but i love it but it's so funny and everyone got very very comfortable i would say um 
I'm thinking about literally I could have done a whole episode about everyone's like pee and poo stories because just so much just happened that there's like not (laughs) not enough time in the day to explain all of it we had so many conversations we spent days talking about poo like you like i'm like you run out of things to talk about but really we had so much to talk about that's just like what (laughs) what we were talking about for so long but so i'm thinking of one specific story and that was when one of so we had just pulled in to this little beach to go scout one of the bigger rapids i think it was called bedrock and one of the ladies was like oh i have to pee and we were like okay cool go on the side of the boat whatever and so not all the boats had pulled in but maybe two of them but she really had to pee so she gets in the water and pulls down her pants starts peeing and this other boat is rounding the corner and she puts out her hand she goes no do not come in here you can't come in here and the guy on the boat's like back paddling he's like okay and you know you're going against the current and on that boat was this eighth grade boy and he said he he was scarred for life he had to see this lady's butt like entire full moon going on okay full moon and he said because at the end of the trip we did like roses and thorns like you know what was the best moment of the trip what was kind of your worst or least favorite moment and his least favorite moment was seeing that lady pee and that to me is just iconic because he's gonna be scarred for life he's gonna remember that like when asked about the trip that'll be his story that'll be his story but it was just so funny it was so funny like what the actual (laughs) there were so many stories about that stories like that that we were all just like whatever who cares and the wildlife on the trip was so cool i mean literally we saw these what are they called why can't i there we saw these sheep but they they're actually i think goats but they're called like bighorn sheep bighorn sheep i think bighorn sheep that might be wrong honestly i just forgot but And we saw two of the rams butting heads on the beach. And literally, so if you think of, you know, when a horse kind of bucks you off, I don't go, I don't know why I'm saying this. I've never ridden a horse, but horse kind of bucks you off. Its legs go up. So the sheep's legs went up and then they ran at each other and hit horns. And then they just stared at each other, like nose to nose, just watching each other. And we we just saw it and we all started screaming and clapping and it was so funny because it's not mating season so we were like why did why did they do that but it was just so cool it was literally like being in the animal channel or like national geographic it was so cool we also saw a bobcat which was fun i'm trying to think what's another animal we saw lots of red ants lots of red ants that was one of the things that was one of the less fun aspects of the trip were all the red ants ant bites it feels like fire um not fun but other than that it was it was just so cool so overall great time had a very fun trip and it was kind of sad leaving everyone because, I mean, I'm like, when am I going to see all these people? Probably never again. But, I mean, that's okay. People go in and out of your life, and that's cool. doesn't mean they're more or less important. Everyone's there for a reason, you know? And it was just fun. I also learned, I'm saying this because I'm pulling at it, but I learned how to make a diamond friendship bracelet, which was very cool. I have one on my ankle. And then I also made a V bracelet, which is on my wrist. Then I made my brother one too. And I made my mom one as well. Because my friend, who was so smart and so kind, brought friendship bracelet string, which was absolutely hype and so awesome. So, leaving the canyon, we got to fly out of a helicopter. And the last time I flew in a helicopter was in Maui. And it was a very long helicopter ride. We were, because it was like a tour, you know? And I thought I was going to die. 
on that helicopter, but this one was so much better. And I have r- these really cool videos from them. It was so pretty and so cool to see the canyon from up above because, I mean, we had been in it for 12 days, but actually seeing an aerial view, you really realize how small you are and it's very grounding to realize that you're just like one small thing in this bigger picture, which I guess can be depressing if you look at it that way, but I think it's kind of cool to think about that you're just one of those small pieces in a bigger picture, or I guess like in a puzzle or something like that. So I'm going to explain the exit travel because getting home took like a day or two. So we helicoptered out from in the canyon up onto the rim and then why can't I remember? Oh, and then to this ranch. Okay. And there was grass there. It was amazing. We got shower, which was amazing. So we were at this ranch. We were there for a few hours. Then from the ranch, we drove on a bus to an, a small airplane and we flew, flew from the ranch to a small airport like outside of Vegas. I think it might have been in Utah or something. And that plane ride was so bumpy. I had I fell asleep on it too because I was so tired, but it was so bumpy. I had to sit like this with one eye closed because apparently it's supposed to help with motion sickness. I actually learned this on my first helicopter ride, but if you close one of your eyes, it's supposed to mess up your depth perception, which I guess motion sickness is based on that. So when you have one eye closed, it's supposed to make you feel less sick, which also that pilot told me that's why pirates have eye patches because so they wouldn't get motion sickness, which is very cool. I don't know if any of this is true, but this is what he told me. It was like this random Brazilian pilot guy who is very sexy. He was a vibe. Um, but that was all in Maui. But so I was doing that and then I also fell asleep. And then from that small airport, we drove on a bus to the Vegas airport. And at Vegas, we checked our bags and we had maybe until 11 p.m. It was like 10 a.m. or not 10 a.m. I don't know, maybe 2 p.m. sometime in the afternoon. And we were like, okay, what are we going to do? We're in Vegas. So we went shopping. We went to, we walked around in some of the casinos. Uh, we, where did we go? We went to the Bellagio. I think that's what it's called. And we ate lunch. It was super yummy. And then we were shopping the rest of the day. Actually, my entire fit at the moment is from Vegas. Right now it's all Lululemon. Uh, I, which is funny because I literally don't own anything from there. I maybe have three things. Now I have five, which is exciting, but we went shopping, which was super fun. Spent the day in Vegas and then we flew home on a red eye which was horrible as I mentioned at the beginning of the episode then we were in Chicago then flew home got home maybe 2 p.m and now I'm here well this is not this is the next day but it was honestly such a great trip so much fun and I'm saying this all I'm not trying to brag about any of this obviously but I just wanted to share my experience because if you ever get the opportunity to go somewhere to travel to maybe do something out of your comfort zone just do it and it'll be the best time and even if it's not you'll have fun stories and I highly recommend so yeah cool times but thank y'all for listening to this episode I hope it was fun in case you were wondering where I was I mean I did have episodes go out but I was in the Grand Canyon and it was fun and it was the best time but make sure you leave a review follow subscribe whatever all the things do them if you're on YouTube leave a comment say hey let me know what you've been up to And also, if you want to support me and the pod, there is a link in the description of this episode, and you should definitely check that out. But also make sure you're following me on Instagram and TikTok at the Girly Girl Podcast. And again, as always, all the links will be in the description below. Thank you all so much for listening. I love you guys so much. Bye!